All right, so I'm trying to uh, electro disposition the copper from the brass. Um, this is 50-50 water, hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid is 31.45%. Um, and I'm running at 5 volts right now. Uh, I guess we'll see if this does any better than with sulfuric acid. Um, yeah, so this is what's going on. Alright, so it's been 24 hours or so, and you can see um, it does seem like this is working a good amount better. You can see it's just absolutely fuzzy down there. It's pretty thick. Um, and then the, the um, anode, you can see on this side how thin it is in comparison to that side. Kind of neat looking. I mean, because it's actually it's hard to tell the difference of size other than by the thickness of it, like that. Um, but from like looking at it from like the back angle, like this, you literally can't tell the difference. But um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is strain this out and then um, try to do like an assay test on it, see if I what other if it's just the copper in there or if it's pulling the other metals and where they're going. So uh, I'll figure that out and I'll let you know how I did that and then what it is. Alright, so it's been about 48 hours now and uh, now I have to change the liquid in here. Well, not the liquid, but I have to filter it out because it's about full with sponge material now. And so this method definitely works. Um, but I still need to do an assay to figure out what all is down in there <laughs> but yeah so this is definitely the way to do it hey guys so I poured it out and I restarted it except for now I'm at 75% uh, water and 25% HCI and um, so this seems like it works a lot better it's been like this for maybe about an hour and a half or so and you can see I mean, a lot of it's floating, but uh, let's see if you can see down in there. Um, yeah, you can see it down in there. There's a bunch more on the bottom now. So this uh, acid-to-water ratio works way better. Just thought I'd throw this in there. So in here, I guess, to for resolve for this video is whatever the brass broke down to is in here. So there's copper and tin in it. And um, so tin melts at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, a little under, and copper melts at a little over 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. So by heating it up to say 600 or whatever, then the tin will melt out and then I'll be left with my purified copper in one part and then a glob of contaminated tin down in another part. So, uh... I guess that's how I'm going to end up doing it, and um, when I get there, I'll probably post in the uh, description how well that part works, and um, so, yeah, so that's that, till the next one, guys.